Hey, my name's OCH4, and you are watching OC's Tech Tips. I'm back. Okay, so in today's tutorial, we are going to be learning about how to use Google Forms. It's so handy, and we're going to get straight into it. So first of all, when you open up a, a web browser, you can use any web browser. I would recommend using Google Chrome. Uh, when you're signed into your Google account, do you know what? Let me just give you this quick tip because the reality is a lot of people do not utilize their Google accounts. If you have a Gmail email address, you have got access to all the Google tools that you can find here in the top right corner. You can see this icon here and it gives you a list of applications that you have access to absolutely free of charge and it will store all of your information in your Google Drive. This is your central place that you can find anything that's been shared with you, whether it's a document, spreadsheet, uh, slide deck, um, anything, anything. You'll get alerts and it will come up through here. But today we're going to focus on Google Forms. So we're going to click on this and it will open up Google Forms and you will have any forms that you've pre, uh, created already will show up there. But for you, you will not have any there and you will be able to start a brand new one from the start. What is Google Forms? I'll see. Well, Google Forms is a way in which you can collect data. It is creating an online form for people to fill in and you can have feedback and you can analyze the responses. So the first thing you'll find is it will create a blank template like this. You have no title so you can change your title just by typing in here. And you can see as with all the other Google applications, it says on title form here, if I click on it, it will now change it to the title that I've typed in at the top. Going from top to bottom, you can see here, you've got the title. You can obviously make a new folder. You can start this um, as a favorite so that it shows up uh, quicker. You can find it as a favorite form or something that's important to you. All changes are saved in Drive as you go on. You're in the question pane right now. If you enter the responses pane, you'll see there are zero responses, but this form is accepting responses, but we haven't shared it with anyone yet. So that's not really relevant for us for now. We'll focus on the questions tab. Here you can change elements. You can customize the theme. You can preview what your um, uh, questionnaire looks like. You can change settings. We'll have a look at those a bit later. And then you can send it once it's completed. This just shows that I am logged in as me. And there are more options here to undo, make a copy, move to trash, get pre-filled link, uh, print, add collaborators, script editor, add-ons, purposes. We're not fussed with any of those things for now. For now, we're just creating a simple form and then we want to know how to share it so that people can fill it in and we can get the information we need. So, the tools that you need to be familiar with are on the right-hand side here. We can add a question, we can import a question, you can add a title and description, add an image, add a video, and we can add a new section. So first of all, let's go to question. We've got a question here that's appeared already. It's an untitled question. I can tap on it, and that shows me that this has automatically come up with multiple choice options. Option one will add another. As we add options, another one will continue to add underneath. We'll see. Um, the other styles of questions we have, Short answer, paragraph, check boxes, drop down. And then we have a file upload uh, question where it gives people the, answer, uh, the option of uploading a file in order to answer that question. Linear scale, so that'll be uh, uh, similar to a Likert scale. Multiple choice grid, multiple choice, uh, sorry, the checkbox grid, which is different to multiple choice grid. Um, date and time. So, to begin with, really, for most forms, we'd like to know people's names, or you may ask people for their email address or both. So I'm just going to type in name, and it is left as a short answer box. This means that people, when they start off, they are asked to write their name, and they would fill it in there. Here we can see we can either duplicate this, delete it, make this a required or optional question. 
And this is handy because some questions, people, uh, it may not be imperative for you to know the response from every single entrant of the uh, uh, data, every single user that's filling in the data. So you could leave it as not required. So that means people have the option, they could fill it in, they don't have to. If you know that this information is vital, you have to know it, you click required to make sure that people definitely answer that question. Okay, that was part one of how to use Google Forms. Check out part two that's coming up soon. Thank you so much for watching OC's Tech Tips. Be sure to like, share and subscribe and see you next time.